The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyameche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyameche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believers relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyameche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Discipline is to make disciple of a certain principle, ideology, or a to follow a person. And so and it's uh will be to me the abrabo idea be at it will be and as a on them so be mobi a duchi. Now discipline is to make disciple of a certain principle or ideology or a person. And it's uh and tears one is uh on num a de be so and as and titi be a nya so sem so a bit to me at it will be. That we discipline to achieve a purpose. Good discipline should have a goal. So you just don't discipline. You must discipline for a purpose. And I'm saying that good discipline should have a goal. So I want to submit this evening. That sometimes discipline is meant to make a disciple of a certain principle, a geology, or a person. Discipline is to make disciples of a certain principle, of a certain ideology, certain set of doctrine or belief that guides a people. And she Discipline is to make a disciple of a person. Jeremiah chapter 35. We want to look at the Rechabites. Jeremiah 35. From verse 1. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. During the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josh, Josiah, king of Judah. Go to the Rechabite family and invite them to come to one of the side rooms of the house of the Lord and give them wine to drink. So I went to get Jezaniah, son of Jeremiah, the son of Abazina, and his brothers, and all his sons, the whole family of the Rechabites. And I'm a kofa, a bazia ba, Yeremia ba, as a near, Nini Nianum, ni Mermanina, and ni won't rack up for fearful Nina. I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the room of the sons of Hanan, son of Igdaliah, a man of God. It was next to the room of the officials, which was. Over that of Messiah, son of Shalom, the doorkeeper. Now, me the one me ba a radifiye me ko onyankopon nipa yagdala ene hana mapia a wo mapon mapia noho opuno ano she for salumba masel pia etifinumu. So we always have men of God. Inti bribiye mu ye onyankopon eni pa. Despite the situation, there is someone here who the Bible says man of God. And found it ye besi ubi oha ye friendu onyankopon nipa. Then I set bowls full of wine and some caps before the Rechabites and said to them, drink some wine. And I made the Nkrua ah and Sa Ayano Mamma ne and Crassi see Rock up 
fie mma no enim na me se won se monnu monsa but they replied we do not drink wine because our forefather Jehonadab son of Rechab gave us this command neither you nor your descendants must ever drink wine na wo se yere nnu monsa na yen eja Rechab ba Jehonadab ahye yen se monnu monsa na monnu bibiara na yen nnu bi de biara da also you must ne never build houses sow seed or plant vineyards you must never have any of these things but must always live in tents then you will live a long time in the land where you are nomads na mun sisi adan na mun nua hwe na mun nya bo betro biara na mun fa ebi nso enya mu dia na entomadan mu na mun tena mun na nyina na modi na pi asase a moye so ahoho no so now pay attention to the big one verse eight. the reason why god has asked jeremiah to go and fetch the rakabite and then try to give them wine afi mu mi enhwe ni ento nyankopon asoma yeremia se onko fre rakab fo no na onma won ensan no looking at how israel will not just obey him or she say israel entie no now if human beings are even obeying human beings and they are not obeying the creator won't he be jealous pe se nipa etie nipa na wontie obo ade na nkasa so onhwe ni nkunu now verse 8 get was we him won hwe no we have obeyed everything our forefather jehonadab son of rechab commanded us neither we nor our wives nor our sons and daughters have ever drank wine na yetie yen eja rechab ba jehonadab de o she yen no nyina mu na yen nyina yen na nyina na yen no mu nsa yen yen yire no your mabening and your mamba sometimes our relationship with god we tend to take our minds of the fact that god is and that he is a person that we ought to relate with to de bia wo ye ni nyankopon ayonko famu ya na ya yi adwuna fu sise wo nyankopon wo ho na oyo bia esese ye ni no etumi edi enkita ho now we grieve him by disobeying him te ye yaso de manyame a ya ya ye ho ni wire now we 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 grieve him our actions pains him because we call him father but we have very little disrespect for him we don't pay attention to his instructions we spite him we disobey him sometimes before our friends we are even shy of him that is a creator god verse 9 or build houses to live in or had vineyards fields or crops now you don't have any of this just because your forebears said don't do this na yen sisi adan entenemu na yen ni bobetro ni efodi ani ade a wodru wodru wodua biara e sanu nsisha wode ma wonti woni we nu bia na we have lived in tents and have fully obeyed everything our forefather Je jehonadab commanded us we have lived in tents and we have fully obeyed everything our forefather jehonadab commanded us na yeti tentu mademu na yetie na ye ye ya yese de yen eja yonadab she yen no hunyina but when the book of nisa king of babylon invaded this land we said come we must go to jerusalem to escape the babi the babylonian and the aramean armies so we remained in jerusalem but when they got to jerusalem they will still not drink wine they will still not have vineyards they will still not build houses they told themselves we are nomads na okay kai if you mu dumienu no eduba kuno say na babel 
hene ni buka neza tuba asasi suono ya kase mumra mayenko Yerusalem enfri kadel fordom eni sari fordom no enim na yebeti na Yerusalem ni wutuko Yerusalem ni nina ano wanante se tutina fwa na wodi sa enshishaya wadi ama wuyi nina aso there's this beautiful song that has been traveling from generation to generation. When we walk with the Lord, in the light of His word, what a glory He shares on our way. While we do His good will, the Almighty will abide with us forever. All we need to do is to trust and obey. For there is no other way. No other way. There is no shortcuts. To be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. Because our forefather said it. Even those of us who, who did not see him. We have stuck to his instructions. We wonder if they are not having vineyards and they are not planting crops and they don't have houses. How would they live? But you see, they are proudly saying, we have not done that. But Jehonadab has bound his descendants to a nomadic lifestyle. Free of the trappings of sedentary life or abiding in one place. And the Rakabais had been obedient. See, these rules don't drink wine, don't build houses. Don't possess vineyards. Separated his descendants from the wicked Israelite society. And it is said, it preserved this family for generation to generation. Now hear me, brothers and sisters. I am not saying or suggesting that God requires such a mode of living. Or that parents should set rigorous laws and rules for our descendants. I'm not suggesting that go and say that don't build houses, don't don't owe uh, vineyards. I'm not saying that. Min kase onyame ohiyanse yeshe mrakiti bisa anase me chrese awufo enche chere wama se wo me insidai wonso she no ano monsa enye sa na me chere chere. But you see, God created human beings. And he left the heart to be a shrine where he will abide. But somehow in this generation, we have overthrown God from his place and we have enthrown money and possession. We see so much value in things, houses, vineyards. This is what I have, and they don't have God. They have overthrown God from His place and enthroned possessions. That is why I'm careful to say I'm not suggesting to you. Otherwise, tonight some people will die. Tonight some people will die. Because they may be hearing that I'm saying that don't build houses. 
That is not the essence of the chapter. No. The Bible says Jehonadab gave those instructions. Not it didn't come from God. When, when we come to him, he doesn't deny us of houses. Even where we are, we are housed. Our church buildings are uh, we, we are housing in churches. And God desires that we we even build a place for him. So God is not saying that don't houses or building houses is evil. But you see, how they were obedient to their grandfather is the lesson that God wants his right to know. Whether their mode of life was right or not, it's not the issue in this chapter 35 of Jeremiah. Okay. However, I rather it rather has to do with the quality of their obedience. See, by disciplining themselves to follow their forefathers' instruction, they have become his disciples. A people who live by certain principles. The people who live by certain ideology. follower of Jonadab. Jonadab. Don't drink wine. And no monsa. Paul says it leads to debauchery. Paul I will not take that out even in this generation. He wants them to stay focused. Don't drink wine. And no monsa. It leads to debauchery. Don't build houses. Don't possess vineyards. You see, the spirit of this is this. Our life on this earth is transient. We shouldn't be bogged down. Because of earthly things. And since we are simon noma a chair and so we may have houses. We may plant vineyards. But you see our life here on earth. It's transient. We are always on the move. We are always on the move. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are Christians, remember that one day we'll be going home. The house that you build, the fire that you own, good though they may be, one day death will take you out of the house. But listen. Don't let these things have the throne of our heart. Let us hold light to property and money. Because even our forefather, the father of our faith, he did not do that. He lived as someone who was expecting a kingdom. Hebrews chapter 11. From verse 8, please. Hebrews 11, verse 8. <laughs> By faith, Abraham. This one is Abraham. Abraham plus Ham. 
So when you <laughs> when you hear Abraham pass the ham, then you see that the real father, yeah, who call when called to go to the place he would later receive as his inheritance. Now listen. Obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Gideon, our friend Abraham, no, or this city a free call, be a dachin, or be a horse a japadier, na o free a dear, na o nim de okro. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. Now, the wonderful thing about this is that he was going to a promised land. When he got there, this is the promised land. Instead of holding it with his two hands, he still lived on the land promised to him like a stranger. Joseph said, Gideon, or the choir of hope war, watch us as a no so, say on an afour, dear so. Pierre, or who could do as I say, or dear Shane Bonoso, and also, or do honor, or Tenaho, so on an This is a promised land. We, and you watch us as I live there like a stranger in a foreign land. Or Tenaho, say, what war. Not because this is a promised land. We any asasia or the land is now for him. Asasina no could do so no he lived in the land that is his. Asasina no tesono a nedia like a stranger living in a foreign land. That's what now so so hoa or tiana and a four sasin God blesses you with many things, still living them. Like a stranger. So in Yamidi, we are Simon Nomen in our crest, Shirawa, or Modian Tinamu, Sahoho. Remember that one day we'll be going home. I said that in a book of ye. And from there, let us still obey our Maker. A numina, no more young costume, a city, and my young buffoon. He lived in tents. But now into Madame, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. He lived in tents so that. He lived a temporary life. Now, if you live in houses, what that means is that Abraham will not move on. If you, are, you have a tent and you want to move on, you just fold it, you carry it, and you are gone. Yes. Not just say Abraham, na brabo ni na ano otina into madem u chesa mse na oni boshe krono ara adidi for Isaac eni Jacob otina into madem u into madem u otina die base ne yedi tu otina oya no wa 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 sisa na ona wakodo. For he was looking forward to a city. With foundations, whose architect and a and builder is God. Now, or train gra a wolf up him and a teacher for any year for no any unyankopon. So, the Bible is saying that not that he didn't like houses, he was expecting a better house, but here on this part of the universe. He lived a temporary life. But Shall we just bow down our heads and begin to pray? And let us pray that we will dethrone all what we call possession. From our hearts. God may give some to us. But even if he does not give them to us. Don't think that that means we are not blessed. No. No. Let us pray that God will have our throne. Let us pray that God will have our throne. Let us pray that God will have our hearts. And understanding that this life we are just passing through. This world is not our home. This world is not our home. We are just passing through. We are just passing through. Somehow. Somehow. We are becoming too earthly minded. Too earthly minded. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blues. The angels beckon me from heaven's own windows. I have a home in this world anymore. This world is not my home.
You see, they are obedient, they are so powerful. To the extent that even today, we still have a fraternal organization, a friendly society, founded in England in 1835 as part of the wider temperance movement to promote total abstinence from alcoholic beverage. <laughs> They are known as independent order of Rechabites. They are also known as sons and daughters of Rechabites. So this fraternal organization was founded in 1835. Now it spread from England to America, Australia, and parts of the world. Of course, today many of the societies have folded up. But as of now, there are 17 tents. When we call tents, because they lived in tents, there are societies, they call them tents. In Australia alone, they still actively uphold the ideas of no alcohol of alcohol free lifestyle i see the wonderful thing is this there is no break in the chain and for nearly three thousand years a living testimony of total abstinence has been upheld on earth abstinence from alcoholic yeah, this is a group who have called themselves sons and daughters of Like the like Jeho Nightab. The Apostle Paul urged his sons and daughters in the Lord to follow his example or to stick to his godly instructions. First Corinthians 4 from verse 15. First Corinthians 4 from verse 15, please. Even if you had 10,000 guardian in Christ. You do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. So we are saying that Jonadab was the father of the Rechabites. And Paul is saying that I am also your father. Through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I have sent to you Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in the church. My life agrees with what I teach. My life agrees with what I teach everywhere in the church. Look at a man, Paul. Imitate me. Timothy is so close to me. 
I'll send him to you. He knows my inside out. He will let you know how my teaching and my actions go together. So by obeying my instructions, discipline yourself to obey my instructions, you will be my followers, my disciples. Now why is he so confident? And that he wants them to follow him. First Corinthians 11, 1. Look at what he said. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Follow my example as I follow. The example of Christ. So why is urging his sons and daughters in the Lord to follow him is this. Because he is pacing after Christ. He is so, conf he is so confident that they will not miss their providential way. And that they are doing the right thing because he is pacing after Christ. So they should also pace after him. Philippians 3. From verse 17. Philippians 3, 17. Are we together? Yes. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have, you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. And we are no moon Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. As a confident preacher. Yeah, because we have set you a model. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Yeah, because we have set you a model. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. And all those who live as he does has become his disciples. And when you keep your eyes on them and follow their your instructions, you will discipline yourself to become our disciples and by extension, a disciple of Christ. To conclude tonight, brothers and sisters, Christ has commanded us to make disciples of all people. And therefore, we need to instruct ourselves or to discipline ourselves to follow Christ. And we need to bring our children to also follow his instructions. And by so doing, we will discipline them to be disciples of Christ. I want us to read what is inscribed there. Then we will bring our message to a close. Ready, go. Let us discipline ourselves and our household in obeying the word of God to make both them and us disciples of Christ. To make them and us disciples of Christ. We have said, brothers and sisters, that discipline is to make disciples of a certain principle, an ideology, or a disciple of a person. I pray that Lord will help us. Let's set the standards clear. Let us decide how we want our kids to become. Let them 
them live by principles. Let them live by godly ideologies, the word of God. And let, let it be that we, together with them, will be disciples of Jesus Christ. I want us to...